I'm Sal Lavallo and I have been to every single country in the world. This includes all of the famous ones that millions of tourists go to every single year like France and Italy, Canada, Brazil, South Africa, Kenya, India, Japan, Australia, all of them. But it also includes all of the countries that you've maybe never heard of and all of the countries that you've been taught to be afraid of, that have secretive societies, that don't give access to foreigners, that are off limits. I've been to all of them. So today I am here and I'm going to tell you about my experience inside the five most secretive countries in the world. So here we go. First off, we have Turkmenistan. This country located in Central Asia has one of the world's largest reserves of natural gas, which has made it a very wealthy country. It's for a long time been at the crossroads of many civilizations. It was on the Silk Road route, getting a lot of influence from China, wedged between Russia and Iran. It was part of the Soviet Union for almost seven decades and got its independence in the early 90s. Before independence from 1985 until his death in 2006, Turkmenistan was ruled by its president for life, Turkmenbashi. Now, Turkmenbashi was a, a very unique character who instituted some kind of insane uh, laws such as banning the circus and the opera because they weren't sufficiently Turkmen, but also did a lot to try and help the country giving like free education and like using the resource wealth as best as he could. However, he kept the country very, very closed for fear of some influence coming from the outside, such as what had happened for the decades of being under the Soviet Union. He also underwent a process to make Ashgabat, the capital of Turkmenistan, the white city, bringing in all this marble and constructing dozens of enormous buildings, ministries, and even residential places out of this white marble. Now, since his death in 2006, the election of his successor in 2007, Turkmenistan has begun to open slowly but surely. The most famous example of Turkmenistan opening up its doors was the 2017 Asian Indoor and Martial Arts Games. They tried very hard to get the role of hosting this international sporting event. And when they did so, they spent billions of dollars on building all of the venues. However, when it came time for the games, the government had given so few visas to spectators from other countries. They had given so few visas, even for media, that it became this kind of eerie event where spectators were brought in from like the Turkmen, like countryside into the stands just to sit there, uh, you know, wave a flag and pretend that uh, they were supporting whatever the sporting was. Turkmenistan hiding itself from the outside world is often stated by its government as part of its permanent neutrality. So there are about half a dozen countries in Europe that have been given permanent neutral status. Then you have Costa Rica, Panama, and the only other one is Turkmenistan kind of a strange list. But what that means is it won't take any sides in any international uh, political strife. The reasons why some tourists want to go and explore Turkmenistan are mostly three reasons. One, just because of it being closed off, not that many people go there, lots of interesting things um, to see that few people get to see. The second is the Darvaza gas crater, also known as the Gates to Hell. This incredibly fascinating man-made but natural wonder is in the middle of the desert, 80% of Turkmenistan is desert. In the middle of the desert, there was um, a natural gas field and a rig. The rig collapsed. And so they thought that what they could do was to burn the, burn the reserve underneath they lit it on fire thinking it would take a week or a couple weeks uh, to burn through it all rather than it escaping into the atmosphere. Uh, but it's been burning now for almost 50 years. So people love to go there, love to um, like camp around the rim, look down into the like, kind of creepy um, like alien landscape. 
And the third reason is, is Ashgabat, is the White City, is uh, kind of seeing this unique place. So just how hard is it to visit Turkmenistan as a tourist? So getting the visa is infamously difficult and you can only get a visa going through a tour guide and having like booked some kind of tour. Really to get anywhere outside of the capital city of Ashgabat you must be with a guided tour group. However, if you get a transit visa, if you're going across the country by train, you can um, get permission kind of to, to do that transit on your own. In the capital city of Ashgabat, you're allowed to walk around on your own. However, there are so many places that are off limits. There are places you can't even take pictures of, parts of the street that you can't walk in. I was too cold, so Aziz gave me his coat. He says he's not cold. I don't really believe him, but I'm warm, so I'm happy. So we can continue the search for something to do. I was in Turkmenistan for four days in 2016, and I first did two days of a tour where uh, two other tours and myself uh, went to Darvaza, to the gas crater, driving through like the desert, camping that night there, looking out at the fire. It was very cold, uh, but absolutely worth it. Very fascinating. But what I'll always remember about Turkmenistan was the two days later that I spent in Ashgabat. The city is so unique. It's very empty, uh, and yet the infrastructure is fantastic. Wide roads, tall buildings, beautiful parks, beautiful plazas. And most tourists, when they go there, they will just talk about this eerie sense of it being like empty and devoid of life. But I actually had a really fascinating two days because I was at a restaurant with some of the other tourists the first night. And as we were walking out, somebody had to go to the bathroom. So I was standing like at the entrance, just like waiting for the group to get back together. And these two guys sitting, uh, at a table had asked me like hey are you okay do you need anything and I you know I explained oh, I'm just waiting for somebody they invited me to sit down they ended up being like two young Turkmen guys like my age and we ended up in sitting there uh, the three of us for a couple hours just like chatting and I had told them how hard it was to take photos of some of these government sites uh, because the police would always come up to me and tell me to stop and how beautiful I thought it was and I wanted like a good kind of like cityscape of Ashgabat. So they told me that they actually knew of a residential tower that had a really nice roof that had great views so that they would take me there the next day. I ended up spending the entire night with these guys. We like stayed at that restaurant for a while sharing stories and like, you know, just hanging out like young guys do. And then we actually went back to one of the guys' houses where they were having a little house party. They gave me like these traditional kind of like Turkmen dumplings that they, it's kind of their like 3 a.m. you know, after going out food that they usually have. And uh, we, they played guitar. <laughs> I don't know, it was just like hanging out with like normal people like you would expect anywhere in the world. They spoke English because they like were students. One of them was studying in Russia. Um, the other one was just like in Turkmenistan. But it was really fun to kind of connect with those guys. The next day they picked me up at the hotel and they took me on a little bit of a tour around Ashgabat to like their favorite malls, to some of the monuments, to like learn a little bit of the history, and then of course to get some some more food. Uh, some like traditional Turkmen food, like this like cheese and meat kind of pie thing. Um, that was really, really good. Turkmenistan, uh, definitely like a secretive society. Like there, there's a lot of the country that I wasn't able to see. I mean, there's, um, ways to go about and do it, but um, I would have to go back and spend more more time to do that. But I loved my time in Ashgabat with these two guys. Um, really, when you're in a country like this, you always think that like the people will be just as like closed off as the government, and that's always proven not to be true. 
Like anywhere you go, there are like people who have the same wants and the same uh, fears as you do, and we can always connect on that kind of stuff. So um, with these young guys in Turkmenistan, roaming the streets of Ashgabat at like 2 a.m., like going to a house party, you know, that could have been any city anywhere. So Turkmenistan, definitely different, but just as beautiful as anywhere else. I hope that you enjoyed this video, that you learned something new, that you see them in a little bit of a new light. If you like this video, I have so many more. I even have some much longer ones about some of the countries that I've discussed. So check them out, subscribe, uh, comment. I respond to all the comments. Uh, follow me on Instagram or on Facebook. And I hope that I'll see you again and that you will travel safe. Thank you.